So welcome, uh, in the previous videos we saw how a system has different kinds of energies, macroscopic, microscopic and within microscopic we said uh, the internal energy can have uh, sensible, it can have latent, it can have chemical bond energy, it can have nuclear energy and uh, insensible we said what are the different kinds of sensible energies uh, that are there and so on, right. And we also saw how system interacts with the surroundings. We saw that system interacts with surroundings in uh, mainly in three different ways and uh, those are by heat interaction, work interaction and mass interaction. And we saw that heat interaction is uh, an interaction that is caused uh, driven by temperature difference, right. So heat interaction is driven by temperature difference. Right, and uh, of course uh, you have mass interaction. This is uh, involves mass. Uh, in other words, molecules uh, entering or leaving. And then uh, you have the work interaction. In general, if uh, an interaction is not a heat interaction, is not a mass uh, exchange, then it is a work interaction, right. So work interaction is defined in sort of a negative manner that way, right. So uh, we will look at uh, in this video, we will look at uh, different kinds of work and uh, we will look at certain common characteristics of what heat and work are and uh, what they are and what they are not, right. So, uh, some common forms of work, so broadly speaking, uh, we can say work is uh, uh, mechanical work and uh, there may be a non-mechanical work. And this is only for convenience, this, uh, this uh, bifurcation is only for convenience, there is there's no hard definition for what is a mechanical work and what is a non-mechanical work. Uh, mechanical work consists of many different kinds uh, like for example boundary work and then uh, or you might have shaft work right you might have spring work uh, raising lowering weight right and uh, you might have uh, other kinds of mechanical work right and uh, we know how to quantify this uh, from previous videos right we will talk a little bit more about boundary work which we have not talked about so far but generally speaking uh, we do know how to quantify these uh, and non mechanical a typical example is uh, electrical right right so how do we quantify electrical work, right. So we know that um, electrical work, uh, electricity has two characteristic mainly, one is the voltage, one is the current, right. So uh, and we do know that electrical power P uh, is uh, equal to V times I, right. Broadly speaking, it is the voltage times the current, right. And uh, so if I want to do work, so W electric should be integral of P electric dt and so that is equal to integral of V i dt. So I take the product of V into i and I integrate it over time, I get uh, the electric work and in those cases for which the voltage and the current are constant, uh, I can pull them out of the integral. Uh, so if V i are constant are not functions of time then I can pull them out and we can write uh, this as uh, W electric equal to V i delta t right. Uh, but that I can do only if uh, the voltage and the current 
are both independent of time and if they are dependent on time then I need to evaluate that integral in whichever way they vary with time right. So that is W electric and uh, let us talk about boundary work right. So assuming that uh, let us say I have a sort of a piston cylinder arrangement and uh, let us assume that uh, for example that um, Well, uh, yeah, so let us assume that the outside is atmospheric and so this P is equal to P atmosphere uh, is equal to 1 atmosphere, right. And inside is pressure P and temperature T and so on, there is a substance um, that is expanding, right. And so basically it is pushing the piston out and so when it is pushing the piston out, there is a force that it applies on the piston, right? And assuming this is a quasi equilibrium process, uh, the force on the piston at any given time, the net force on the piston must be 0. And so, therefore, this inner pressure must be equal to uh, the outer pressure P atmosphere, right? Um, right? And so, the force then uh, is equal to Pi times the area of the piston, right. And then the work done then is equal to F times the distance. So that is equal to Pi times A times distance, right. And uh, so it is basically the pressure inside multiplied by the area of the piston uh, multiplied by the distance traveled, right. And you know that uh, this area times the distance is nothing but the volume that is swept volume. That is if the piston is here and it, then it moves here, uh, then we do know that this is the distance D and uh, this is the area of cross section A. So A times D is also the volume. So this is Pi times V, right, where V is the uh, delta V, sorry. Right. So, in general though, uh, we call this PdV work, right. This is only true if the pressure remains constant. If the pressure varies through the process, then I have to have a different kind of calculation, right. So, for example, I could have a piston cylinder arrangement such that um, the pressure inside varies with, with time, right. So, how can I have that? I can have it if I have the same piston cylinder arrangement with a piston there and this piston let us say is connected to a spring, uh, right. And so as this substance here is expanding, it is doing work on the spring and so therefore the energy stored in the spring increases, the spring applies an additional force on the piston and so throughout the process, the force on the piston must be 0, the net force must be 0. So, which means that the inside pressure has to be greater than the atmospheric pressure because there is also a force that this spring applies in the right to left direction, right. So, therefore, uh, at any given point, if the pressure during uh, a movement delta x, right. So, let us say that the piston has moved by dx, right, then the force is uh, Pi times A times uh, this is the force, right, times the distance is dx, right, and uh, I have to integrate that through the process. So that is basically uh, an integral of Pi times dv in general, right. All, I always do not have a constant cross-sectional area. I might have a changing cross-sectional area. I might have an expanding volume. I might have different ways of doing boundary work. So, this is called the boundary work. Right. And uh, remember that for boundary work to be equal to P integral P dV, right, for boundary work to be equal to integral P dV, it must be a quasi equilibrium process. Otherwise, uh, the pressure inside the net force on the piston need not be 0, right. And so therefore, we do not know at any given point what is the pressure inside and what is the 
pressure that is doing work on the piston and therefore uh, we do not we cannot calculate the boundary work so uh, if for example if this piston were in vacuum so if i had a piston cylinder arrangement in space and i let the piston expand right uh, without any opposing force then the piston would move very fast right and when it moves very fast it's not a quasi equilibrium process anymore and so therefore i cannot do in that case an integral pi dv right because i do not know what the inside pressure is uh, it is in fact not one value and so the system itself is not in equilibrium and when that is true then the you know that the state of a system is not defined and so it does not have one pressure right so i cannot do this integral pi dv for a non quasi equilibrium process right um coming to other types of mechanical work right so so shaft work right so suppose i have a gas turbine right and i have uh, hot and high temperature and pressure gases enter this turbine and uh, there are blades as i said mounted on the turbine right and here i have uh, temperature 2 uh, pressure 2 here i have t1 p1 so high temperature high pressure gases enter the gas turbine rotate the blades and uh, they are basically doing shaft work right so what shaft power so we know that uh, p shaft is equal to the power on a shaft we know that it's equal to the torque times the speed right so let's call torque t and speed uh, s so that's torque times speed and uh, w shaft work is therefore integral p shaft dt and so that is equal to integral ts dt right where t is the torque well uh, let's call t tau right so this is tau because uh, uh, this is torque this is speed right so this is uh, 1 by second this is a newton meter right <clears throat> right so so that's how we calculate the shaft work right and if torque is constant and speed is constant then uh, w shaft is just uh, torque times whatever is the constant torque times speed times delta t right and uh, we do know spring work it's um, right so i know that uh, the work done on the spring is uh, w spring is equal to half k x square so how does this uh, come i get uh, kx as the uh, force multiplied by dx i integrate that so i get uh, half k x square right so that's uh, spring work raising or lowering a weight that's uh, uh, easy so if i take a mass m and increase its height uh, with respect to some reference frame by let's say delta z uh, then i have done work w uh, let's call this gravity is equal to um, m times g times delta z right so this is uh, all mechanical and non mechanical forms of work right and uh, so this is these are the different kinds of work interactions that a system can have we, there are other work interactions that we haven't talked about right but these are the major types that are commonly found in everyday devices everyday life 